This is JSA TV. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya here at the Infrastructure Masons Global Member Summit in Silicon Valley. Joining me here today, I'm very excited to have Dr. Julie Albright, the author of the just released book, Left to Their Own Devices How Digital Natives Are Reshaping the American Dream. Thank you, Dr. Albright, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Oh, I am so thrilled. I've been fascinated by your book. Um, thank you so much for joining us here today. You are a sociologist focused on the divergence, the section, the crossing of technology and behavior. That's right. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, well, I am approaching the subject from a couple different perspectives. I have two counseling degrees, a master's and a doctorate in counseling, and also a doctorate in sociology. So I'm really looking at the broad sociological changes that are happening in society, and then I'm putting on my counseling hat to think about how it impacts us on the ground in terms of people, their mental health, their relationships, how they are changing in the workforce, and, and all these kinds of things. And I really, I just found this book so fascinating and touching on things that are so hyper relevant today. Uh, we're talking about folks who are engaging in this untethered living. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yeah, so that's the main cornerstone of the book is the idea that we're coming untethered. Young people, particularly digital natives, are unhooking from things that uh, other generations did routinely. Things like getting married or buying a home or having children or staying at a job for 35 years that people would do all the time. And instead they are hyper attached to digital technologies. And I'm looking at the difference that makes growing up digital or as a young adult or when you're in the workforce, what changes are happening as a result of unplugging from these stabilizing social structures and kind of building your house on sand in a way uh, where you're hyper attached and, and always on to things like social media and Instagram, for example. I love that, building your house on sand. That, that definitely describes this feeling of your, your, your structure, things that you, you know and hold dear, all sort of s fading away. Um, and, uh, and folks instead um, walking around uh, unaware of what's happening around them and really mm -hmm. just on their phones um, and, and on their Instagrams, et cetera, and really um, un unattached to, to what we'll say is reality versus virtual reality. Yeah. Um, so what are some of the, the effects of living in this untethered life? Yeah, well, I want to also first say that I'm not trying to be Amish, where we want to throw out all our devices. Right. So some people might think it's an indictment against it, uh, devices or against social media. And it's fun to do these things. Let's, let's just admit, it's fun to text, it's fun to post on social media and Facebook and Instagram and things like that. And so I'm not against that. It's just that we're sort of out of balance, I would say. Mm -hmm. Out of balance with our own bodies, uh, with our embodied lives, out of balance with nature and going outside. You know, for example, only 6% uh, of kids are playing outside at all anymore. And we're seeing some, uh, I some implications for these things. You know, we've got anxiety going through the roof and depressions and physical things like obesity and diabetes and whatnot. Uh, so I really explore that and think about how we need to sort of re-tether ourselves to something and, you know, get back in our, our bodies and our tactility and our senses that are really stripped away in this digital environment. We're really only looking at visual things or auditory things, but there's a whole raft of experiences that are sort of getting, getting written off, and it's not really healthy for us in the long run. No, I, I absolutely see this, and even in today's headline, you had the, the fourth death this month um, at, uh, at the uh, Grand Canyon, folks taking selfies and not yeah. aware of their environments. Yeah. And, and you know, this was just one headline I, I caught walking in today. Yeah. And uh, it just uh, scares me at how vulnerable we make ourselves by not being aware of our environment yeah, and yeah. society. And the funny thing is too, you, you, people are walking in front of cars, they're trying to put lights in the sidewalk now so people see the flashing lights rather than in front of them because they're looking down. So people are trying to sort of adapt to this but the idea also is you're in your own little bubble world and if you're in an airport or you're in a coffee shop or something, you're sort of riding off those kismet moments, those moments of surprise or 
or just the timing where you might have met someone next to you, but because you have your earbuds in and you're in this virtual world, you're missing out on the things around you that might have led to some new and, and maybe interesting experiences. Yeah, not just communicating with others, but even your own imagination, you know, or daydreaming. Yeah. Is that is that yeah. a thing? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. Going out in nature, for example, the research shows it gives your time, your brain time to rest. Mm -hmm. So when we're focused on social media, focused on texting, or focused on tasks all the time, which we are increasingly, your brain is always working, working, like working overtime. That's the stress hormones that start and everything else. Going out in nature, for example, without a device, allows your eyes to look around and wander, and it allows your brain to have what they call diffuse attention. So you calm down. And these are the experiences that are missing in modern life. So that's, you know, it's sort of a tonic for our over-civilized lives. So we just have to find ways to bring these experiences back in to our repertoire of experiences in life. Yeah, and, and for us, uh, I and uh, members, Infrastructure Masons members, we're technologists at heart. Do you have any words of advice for us? How do we strike this balance? Yeah, well, I would say, you know, not only technologists, but also fathers and mothers and husbands and wives and, you know, t professors and, and all these things, bosses. So I would say start by demonstrating or modeling the behaviors. You know, if you're going to sit down with your family, let's have a, a sacred space where there's no devices over dinner or perhaps in a meeting. So you're not uh, multitasking because you're not really focused on anything fully is what they're finding out. So this idea of maybe starting to set some examples of how to set a device aside and have lunch or dinner with someone where you really pay attention and focus and listen. And you know it'll make a huge difference in relationships and how you feel and everything else. Yeah, and certainly this balance needs to be uh, struck. You gave that example in the book of the 17-year-old who, who actually killed herself because her parents tried to restrict her from Facebook. Yeah. And it just shows how distorted our... our Perception. Yeah. So thank you so much. Dr. Albright, thank you so much for your time today. For our viewers who want to learn more, just released, definitely, definitely recommend. It is the Left to Their Own Devices how digital natives are reshaping the American dream now on Amazon. That's it from the floor of iMason's Global Member Summit here in Silicon Valley. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya. Happy networking.